Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently I received an email from someone asking me if I could do a video demonstrating how to do the Adamski effect in Photoshop. If you're not familiar with the Adamski effect, it's a beautiful look that you could apply to a photograph that has been popularized by the photographer Josh Adamski. An image that has the Adamski effect will have the subject or subjects in perfect focus and everything else will be blurred out. But there is a specific quality to the blur. The blur most often is a motion blur, sometimes a linear blur. And when done properly, it is a beautiful look that can be applied to an image. Now, in today's video, I'll be applying the Adamski effect or Adamski look to three different images. We're going to start out with this image because it's a very easy image to apply the Adamski effect to. Then we're going to move on to this image. This image will be a bit more challenging. Finally, we're going to finish with this image, and here we're going to apply what I'm calling a derivative of the Adamski effect. We're going to go through all the Adamski effect steps, except we're going to do something a bit different at the end. I would just want to show you that you could try other things and hopefully come up with something that works for you. Now, all of the images I'm working on today will not be as beautiful as Josh Adamski's work, so I encourage you to Google his name and check out his photograph so you can get a true idea of how beautiful the Adamski effect is. Before I begin, I do have a favor to ask. If you haven't already, could you please subscribe to my YouTube channel? Also, after you do that, go over to my website, anthonymorganti.com. At the top, you'll find that I have some free keyboard shortcuts. They're downloadable PDFs for Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, On One Photo Raw, and Luminar Neo. Download all of them that you want. Then check out some of the other stuff I have here. I have a complete course on Lightroom. I have some Lightroom presets and profiles, some On One presets, some Luminar presets, and some LUTs. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website, and I have a discount code for my Ultimate Lightroom Classic training course. Okay, the Adamski effect. I mentioned that you'll have a subject or subjects in the image in perfect focus. So what we need to do first is we need to isolate the subject into this, in this image. There's a number of different ways you could do that. If you have the contextual taskbar active, you could just click on select subject. And if you don't see the contextual taskbar, go up to window and then go down and make sure that that is checked. So with the contextual taskbar, we'll just click on select subject and Photoshop will do its thing. And then you'll see the marching ants going around the subject. Now we need to refine the selection, make sure that we have the subject selected perfectly. To do that, go up to select and then down to select and mask. From there, you'll get this screen. Now yours may not look like this because we have a number of different views to, you could choose from. Right now I have the overlay view. If you go over here and click on the little view dropdown, you can see there's a number of different ones. Most often I'll use either overlay or on black. Those seem to work best in most instances. Once I decide on what view I want, what I'll do is I'll go up here and I'll just click on refine hair. And you can see that it improves their hair a little bit. Then I'll go over here and I want to click on decontaminate colors. And that usually will improve the hair and improve the edges a little better or a little more. Then I'll go to this drop down and I'll, I'll put it to a new layer. And that's really all I need to do because it selected the subject pretty well. Now you can see we have a top layer, it's called background copy, and it's our clipped out subject. What we want to do is turn that off, turn back on the background layer, and click on the background layer. So we have the subject isolated from the background. Now what we want to do is we want to remove the subject from the background. So we're on the background layer, that is turned on, the top layer is turned off. What I recommend you do is just get a loose selection around this, uh, the subject. So don't click on select subject again and get a precise uh, selection. Let's do the loose selection. To do the loose selection, use the lasso tool and just draw loosely around the subject. What I recommend you do, instead of having the image really large on your screen and having to do large movements of your mouse, uh, make it smaller. Hit command or control minus a few times on your computer so you have a smaller image. Then you don't have to draw as much with the uh, lasso tool. So we'll just draw around, see very loose selection 
nothing fancy, just like that. Once you complete your selection, you'll have the marching ants. Let's fit it to screen, hit Command or Control Zero, so we have it fit to screen. So we have our selection of the subject very loosely done. Click on Generative Fill in the uh, contextual taskbar. When you do that, you'll have the option to type something that you want added to this area. We don't want anything added there, so leave it empty and click Generate. What it will do is, if you're not familiar with Generative Fill in Photoshop, it sends the entire image up to Adobe, and the heavy lifting is done on Adobe servers. And what will happen is it will give you three examples of the subject removed. Here's one, here's two, and here's three. Pick any of them that work for you. To me, they're all pretty much alike, but I'll pick that middle one. So that's the one we're going with. Now we have the subject removed from the background. Now you'll notice we have three layers. We have our back or top layer, which is the subject clipped out. Then we have our generative fill layer, and then we have our original background layer. What you need to do next is you need to merge this generative fill layer with the background layer. To do that, just hit Command or Control E. E is an Edward on your computer, and you'll just merge those together. Now we have this background layer, and then we have the top layer with the clipped out subject. And when they're both on, we're kind of right back where we started. But now we could apply the blur to the background, and the blur won't affect the subject. To do that, click on the background layer. And what I recommend you do is make this layer a smart object or a smart layer. When you do that, you'll be able to go back in and re-edit the blur. If you don't do that, when you apply the blur, it gets baked into the layer and you won't be able to re-edit it. So to make this a smart layer, a smart object, go up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Now you can see it has this little square in the corner that indicates this is a smart layer. Now, go up to Filter, down to Blur, and down to Motion Blur. When you do, you'll get Motion Blur, and you can change the way the motion looks with this little wheel here, and you could uh, affect the distance of the blur. So let's just dial something in and say you like it, click OK. Then let's say, well, you know what, I don't like it. I want to go back in and re-edit it. Well, it's a good thing we made this a smart layer because to re-edit now, all we need to do is double-click on the words Motion Blur. It'll bring this up again, and we could come back in and re-edit this. Something like that. All right, then click OK. So that, in its simplest form, is the Adamski effect. Now let's try something a bit more challenging. Let's go to this image. What I'd like to have here is I'd like to have the lady and the rock she's sitting on in perfect focus and then apply the blur everywhere else. So how are we going to select the lady and the rock? Well, we could try to go to the contextual taskbar and click on select subject again and see what it selects. And you could see it selected the lady, but it missed her knee and it didn't select the rock at all. So I need to add to this selection. Uh, to do that, I'm going to just hit the W key on my keyboard, and when I do that, it will jump me to one of three different selection tools, either the Object Selection uh, Tool, the Quick Selection Tool, or the Magic Wand Tool. I specifically want to use the Quick Selection Tool, and I want to be in Add Mode, so make sure you click on the little plus sign there, so we're adding to the selection. I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key, and I'll come back in and select her knee. And then we'll come in here and we'll select the rock that she's sitting on. So I just need to draw right on this rock. And you can see that it's it drew on the rock OK. I want to add this little chunk of rock here. So we'll click on that. And oh, it overselected. It selected this rock here. So what we need to do now, we have this plus, plus brush. I need to make a minus brush so I could subtract from the selection. I could come back up here and just click right there and get the minus brush. But an easier way is just hold in the Alter Option key. While you're holding in that key, you'll temporarily get a minus brush. Then I could come back in, and I could remove the selection from this rock, and I could remove the selection from the water over here. Like that. All right, that's not bad. So we have the rock selected, and we have the lady selected. Now we need to refine this. When you have one of these selection tools open, again, the keyboard shortcut's W, download my keyboard shortcuts for Photoshop, and you'll learn all the keyboard shortcuts for Photoshop. Anyway, when we have that open, right up here we have this button select and mask. 
click on that, I'm going to keep this red overlay. Again, I'm going to refine here. That really didn't do much. Then we'll go over here on the right hand side, we'll decontaminate colors. That added a few strands of her hair there. Other than that, it's okay except right here. You can see a little bit of this rock is still over here. Can you see that? So what I'll do is I'll go to this brush right here. This is just a brush and we're going to subtract and then we'll get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key and then we'll come in here and we're just going to subtract that. We don't want that over there. So that's good. We have a good selection. We're going to output it to a new layer and we'll click OK. So there we have our subject clipped out and the subject for my intents and purposes is the lady and the rock she's sitting on. Now we're going to turn that off and we're going to turn our background layer on and go on that. Now we need to get rid of her from the background layer. So we're again going to get a loose selection by clicking on the lasso tool. We're going to make this smaller by hitting command minus on my Mac. It's control minus on a PC. So I don't have to draw as much. And then we're just going to take the lasso tool and loosely draw around our subject being the lady and the rock like that come across here up here so we have our selection we'll fit this to screen by hitting command zero on my mac control zero on a pc we'll click on generative fill don't type anything there click generate it's going to again send this image up to adobe's cloud servers and all the work's done up there and when it is done it's going to give us three examples to choose from hopefully one of these will be acceptable and once it does, you'll see there's one, there's two, there's three. I like the first one. I think that's fine. So we'll just go with that. All right. And close that down. Now we need to merge the generative fill layer with the background layer. Just make sure you're clicked on the generative fill layer and hit command or control E to merge them. Go back on. You could turn on that top layer that has the lady on it with the rock, but make sure you're clicked on the background layer. Make this a smart object by going up to filter, convert for smart filters. Then let's apply our blur. Go up to filter, blur, and then motion blur. And again, we have the same options. I'm going to make, make it go horizontal. And then we'll do this, maybe. Something like that and click OK. And that's it. That's the a Damsky effect done to this image. Now, I mentioned on this image, we're going to do a derivative of the Adamski effect, but we're going to go through the same steps. So what we need to do is we need to get a selection of the subject. Now, again, I'll just go to the contextual taskbar and I'll click on select subject, and hopefully it will find both the woman and the man, and it did. So now we need to refine this. So we'll just click on select and mask because I have the lasso tool open that's there. If you don't see that there, you could go up to select and then down to select and mask. And again, I have this uh, red overlay background, so that's fine. We're going to refine hair. See it improved our hair a little bit. We'll go over here and decontaminate colors. And then we're going to output it to a new layer and we're going to click OK. And there we have our clipped out couple. We're going to turn that off turn on the background layer, click on the background layer. So that's the active layer. Now we need to remove them from the background layer. Again, we're going to get a loose selection for that. Use the lasso tool for that. We're going to zoom out so I don't have to draw as much by hitting command minus a couple times. Then I'll come down here and I'll start over here and I'll just draw loosely around our happy couple. Oops, got a little too close to her hair, I think. We'll come down here. That's pretty good. Now we'll hit uh, Command-0 to fit it to screen. Now I got a little too close to her hair, so I'm in the plus mode that's right here. To see that, how I'm going to add to this selection? Just go in here, just add to it. So we have her hair selected better. So that's not too bad. We're going to click Generative Fill. Not going to type anything there. Click Generate. Again, it's sending it up to Adobe servers, and it's going to give us three examples of them, hopefully, perfectly removed from the image and that one kind of looks silly that one looks maybe a bit better and that one yeah, I don't know now it doesn't have to be perfect I mean you could see their outline almost here but that's okay we're going to be applying blur to this anyway so it doesn't matter so don't get too picky here that looks actually decent so we'll go with that 
Then we have to merge this generative fill layer with our background layer by hitting Command or Control E, E for Edward. Then we're going to make this a smart layer by going up to Filter and then down to Convert for Smart Filters. We're going to turn on our background copy layer, which is our clipped out couple, but we're going to stay clicked on this layer zero. This is the background layer because we're applying our blur here. Now, instead of applying motion blur, I want to try something different. This is where I'm changing it up slightly. I'm going to go to filter and then I'm going to go to blur and then I'm going to go to radial blur. And unfortunately with radial blur, you don't have a preview, so I can't really see what it's doing. So it's important that you make this layer a smart layer so you can come back in and readjust it. I do want to blur from the middle, so I'm just going to click right there. I'm going to spin it. So we'll go to like 43 and see what that looks like. Quality, good. And let's just click OK. Now you can see the look you got. If that's too much, double or too little, double click on the words radial blur again, and let's make it a little less and click OK. Yes, maybe even a little less and click OK. There you go. So that's something like that. So it gives you an idea of another thing you could try by going through this Adamski effects steps, the, the steps for the Adamski effect, but then just trying a different blur and see what it looks like. And, you know, it just gives you a different look, kind of looks like a tunnel or something. So that's it. That's the Adamski effect in Photoshop. Uh, thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.